And our topic of discussion this morning is the Lagos Ibado Expressway reconstruction. Of course, from that uh, little package you brought your way, we gave you like a brief history on what's been happening and also what's currently going on uh, on that particular expressway. Joining us in our Lagos studios this morning is a friend and uh, he is a very boisterous commentator on this program, <laughs> Mr. Shola Omolayo, who is a social commentator. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, I like yes. that you're boisterous. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. All right, we're looking at the Lagos Ibadan Expressway on the show and the many issues. Let's start from the Apex Body, which is the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, which should essentially be in charge of seeing to that road you know right from the time that road was commissioned in 78 it has always been in one form of you know a derelict state or the other there's always one issue with contracts and all. let's look at the ministry and how con contracts are being awarded for federal projects in the first place um i i i want to believe that um uh, we should first appreciate uh, the regime that um commission that uh, road, road because okay. they have a very good concept mm. and uh, the result was fruitful at the time um, uh, the road was uh, constructed and mm. you know too well that it was one of the link channel route to other states in the best comfortability of it i know t i also understand that at a point in time if you live in lagos or you live in a badon it's like a stone throw you know you see people going to a bad and say we want to go and catch fun for mm -hmm. the weekend. They easily go there, go to a badon like going to uh, Iyanopaja or going to the VI. Mm -hmm. But today, is, the story has changed to become <clears throat> an institution of excursion. You know, anytime you think about Lagos, Ibadan, Express Road. So from the beginning, it was a good concept, but the maintenance of it is how we find ourselves where we are today. Okay, let, yeah, let me just take it up from where you stopped, um, the maintenance aspect, uh, because that road is as old as time, if yeah. you want, if I should use that term. Is it a thing about us, uh, uh, because some people would say that the federal government has no business, you know, <coughs> handling road or maintaining roads, that it should be a thing of um, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, con um, the concurrent list of um, the, the state government. So what I don't understand, is it that um, we don't really have a very good maintenance culture when it comes to issues of um, construction and, of course, um, infrastructure in Nigeria. I think the problem is about the people, as I keep saying. You know, when you talk about state, you talk about federal. Who cares? What do we really understand about governance in our own state? None of us really understand. It's only when issues are being fired that we begin to say, okay, this is strong A road, strong B road, strong C road. And what does that language need to do with any individual? Okay, even if it is what if you are complaining, if we are now saying that uh, the, 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 the road job is not for government, mm. which of the for, uh, government are we talking about? Is it the state government mm. or the, the federal government or the local government? Which one of these three group of people are even functional in a real sense? Mm. The only place where you can talk of something meaningful, something meaningful now is on the legal state concerning road. Mm. If we are even talking about road. Uh, Ibadan Express Road, Lagos Ibadan Express Road, is even a, a kind of a, 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 a slap, an insult to the whole generation. You picking a road, you are not talking about that network that even make the road viable. The road is so congested, so pressured because all other link roads are abandoned. Come to think of it, right now there is a road that would have, that would have helped that Ibadan Express Road, mm. from whatever thing you're talking about, either you put it right or you're still maintaining it, this road from either... Okay. I, don't I, I, I know you're very... I don't want to start. Yeah. You're very, you're very, just yeah. right, I don't want to start. Because because you, you, you see, what, what amazes me mm. is that why you just said the oldest road. Mm. That cannot be the oldest road. You want to know the one oldest the road? Oldest it can't even be one of the oldest road. The oldest road is in my town. Oh, which is? In my town, Nekiti. Okay. You, the, the same that narrow path we take from Elisha down to wherever that narrow thing since the days of the our old western state mm. that is the most and nobody is talking about those roads mm. that, that the road that is in the eastern part of this country 
In the days of their sick way, or whatever, whatever name you want to call them, that same part has still been there. Nothing. You talk, uh, talk about uh, Lagos by the express road. It's an insult on every link road in, in Nigeria. But, but don't you think that if it were uh, uh, given to the state government specifically... It's not about the state. It's not about... It's the contractor. The contractor. Yes. It's not about management. Let, let me tell you. Because the problem I'm having paid. is not about the mm. people who... Are governing at any point in time, mm -hmm. if not the contractor, especially this Julia Banker or whatever you call them. These people are just making us. They are one of the institutions that are destroying us. How would they construct a road in six years? You can't pass it, you can't walk it. How would they get a road without finishing it? So, are you, you, saying, know, are you saying that you know this road? Let us have a express road. Mm -hmm. You go to Sango there, Julia Banker did not finish that road. And nobody is talking about the was it a deliberate, talking about was, the government. Was it a deliberate effort on the part of the Which, who, What is deliberation here? What is the word deliberation or deliberating? Mm. What, what are we deliberating on? That you get people a job and they without finish it? Somebody should come and there should be a law. Could there be a contract pay you know, law? That should be a law. This goes back to what I said. Because they are currently mm. they, they, they they No, before now, they've never been complaining of fraud. Julius Banker as a company has never come to criticize the government, government of this country government. that they've been, they've been, they've been lack owed. of fun okay. or they've been owed. But come to think of it, go to this same Ibadan, Le uh, Lagos Ibadan Express Road you are talking about. Mm. You have two contractors on that road. Let's just forget the politics that was being played in the past. Mm. People start blaming government. This, this, the job was given to two companies. One, maybe ICI, so what is the name RCC, of that? ICC, Rainer Construction Company. Okay, the ICC. Go and check what the, those guys are doing. Now, come and compare it with, to what Judas Baga is doing on this side. Mm -hmm. The only problem you are having now that is making the government not to be very relevant or to be praised in any form is the road that Judas Baga is handling from, from Lagos here to wherever it terminated over there. But the one of ICC, you will never suffer green luck in those areas because we are that, we are really matters for people to travel, they have already done that. Mm. But come to think of the one that we are holding on this side. Is it that the one you want to get into Lagos here? They will be doing one road. When they know, you will be people are dying on that road. Okay. So why did it take place there? Yeah. Because even the the, the, the groom is where you see in the sky here, whereas the bride is right in the church. All, all right, you know, this goes back to what I was the first question I asked, which is, which is you know, her mode of awarding contracts in the first place. You have just said we shouldn't blame the government. Um, if you give a job to a contractor and he doesn't see the job through, I think it it's, it falls on the, that the government. The tax, the, the, exactly. there should be a regulation. Yeah. Exactly. A, a, and they just say, okay, maybe we'll not find out. Yes. Who? That is what you should bring. Mm. You should not expect me to come and tell you that these are the people that need to penalize these people. Nobody because has the been government, penalized. Let so me far. tell you. Let me tell Nobody. you. They have to be penalized because I cannot see why. If Abakuta Express Road, that is also viable, like this Ibado Express Road, mm. is not being done. They said that passenger, because of passenger, is the one that is going to take the tractor or take the bitumen. Is the one that did not finish that road. Go to Songo now. Just the whole thing that is left is not up to half a kilometer. And it is not done. The one that was, uh, the one they did some time ago, uh, under five years or six years, has started caving in. Okay. Mm. Whose fault is that? Yes, blame the government because of what they do. Mm -hmm. But let us begin to discipline ourselves. When you deal with contractors, contractors will know that if I cannot do this job because somebody will come and penalize me tomorrow, they will not dare it anymore. They're still talking about penalizing, mm. you know, defaulting contractors, you know, on, on contracts they've been awarded. Um, I'm thinking this stems from even the politics that plays out before the contract is everybody awarded. Everybody play politics. Everybody play politics. I, I'm going See, somewhere we with should that. not, it is time for us to begin. Because if we are going to put this country alive, I told you, we must start with ourselves. Somebody, you, you, you are working here and you are doing your job very well, whichever way. If you go and pray, it is negotiation. It is bad. Why don't you leave your, leave prayer, come with your certificate? Because you know you are looking for a shortcut to success. That is why you go to God and say, God, let me find favor. Just like the other guy who never know God, go the other way around to bring his Godfather to speak with the management that my son, my daughter is good for this job. If they help you. So we're doing basically the same thing. Oh, not the same thing. Okay. Oh, forget all this grammar we I, talk about. I beg to differ on that anyway. What would you say? I beg what to would differ. you say? I beg to differ. There are many people who also 
want that contract, just like a lot of people need this job. For you to know, if it happens today, I, I choose to be so proud of myself that, oh no, I'm so important. I, hello, I cannot come to that program. Somebody better come. will come to this seat and do much more well. Somebody's okay, but if it's been That's alleged that um, the contractors are, are, well, on their own part, are to be blamed for the stalling of um, the completion of the work, yeah. oh, why don't you think that the federal government, if they are aware of what's going on, why are they reluctant? In because we've the been place? blaming the government. Because we have not seen where, you know, when, 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 when you have, when you have a, a, a rat and a cat in your house, mm. once you cannot change the, chase the rat so that the cat will catch it, and you are chasing the cat, the rat will have a very good cover until you go to bed and it will go to your kitchen because he, he understands it. This contractor, because their names are not mentioned, we always rub it on the government. Mm. For God's sake, yes, we are being owed by government. But before you go for that contract, you have a deal mm. that you're going to do this job. And if you're going to do it, Lagos is by the express road. Which part have you worked on for people to say, man, these guys have tried. Don't Pay you. them. Mm. Mm. Pay them. Too much of the, you see, People blame politicians as well. But we also encourage some of the people who manipulate the politicians. Because they are the ones that will turn around and sponsor people to go into office. Yeah. But when you begin to mention the people who are behind some of these faults, because I don't know how two companies are in operation. I don't know, what is the name of this? Yeah, what do you call them? Reynolds Construction. I, 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 Reynolds Construction. Uh -huh. I don't know their name. I'm only concerned about who is doing what. I know two contractors are on this road and I'm, I grow to know Julius Baja. So that I know, <laughs> introduced to me by the military. But I also knowing too well that this name has, is just a brand. Mm. It's just a brand. Why can't we begin to think of our own? The company working in Lagos State, do you know how many road Abode has done in Lagos State? What, what is the magic? I'm not celebrating anybody here, but if you're doing what is right, let's do it. So let's, my point is that what brings me to the first question I asked. You just alluded to the fact that Lagos State government is doing well when it comes to road construction. Because if their contractors are, they are willing to work. And the state government actually monitors and then follows to the letter. And also don't, the citizen and all even the well. matter. So don't you the think, people. Don't Go you to think, the east now, I can yes. assure you. If you want to try it, mm. you want to try it, yeah. just put some plank on a lorry mm. and move to the east. That you want to go and roof a house there. Yes. The people who are going to stop you, they are not government agents. Because they, they are the people, the citizens the people, of the, the people. Of the place. And they are yes. going to ask you not for money to develop their roads, mm. not for money to develop their state. It is money. To put in their pockets. I get all of that. So my question I was trying to ask is that if Lagos State is actually doing so well in um, in um, road construction, wouldn't it be better if the, the road was left to Lagos State government to handle? If Lagos State is interested, they can build for it. Just like they are doing all their roads now, mm. all, the, all, all, all strong A road that is called Federal Government Road, mm. they are trying to put a BRT lane there. There must be an agreement. And before you can do such a thing, there must be a kind of a, yes. a, a, a agreement between you, you and, and the, the federal government before yes. you are allowed to walk on their road. Yes. So if that is being done, if Lagos State didn't feel that they can make money there, why not? Mm. If, if I don't feel that they can make money there, why not? If Ogu State feels they can make money there, why not? But even some of these states too, in their own, I don't expect Ambode to go and face it by the express road because in fact, he should, he should be praying on how to shut the entry because the people he's having here are even giving him a lot of problems. You understand it? He should be thinking of how are we going to put in a, a, a kind of a toll gate for some revenue. This I'm saying now, I know it's going to cause problem. And, I'm, and because if they put it at the wrong time, we are going to fight them again. You understand it? But they can also, because if they are coming to Lagos State because your governors cannot put your roads right, and you feel you want to come to Lagos State to do business, and we have a, some good roads for you not to come and put some destruction into it, what we need to do is to do what? Is to put some miniature gate within mm. the entry of Lagos State that when you are going, you are free, but when you are coming in, you pay. 
Okay, All we're right. going to take, we'll a, take break, a break to so allow us to take a report. But when we come back, we'll talk a bit more, particularly about the state of the road yes, as sir. it is mm -hmm. right now. We're still discussing the Lagos Ibadan Expressway reconstruction. Uh, we'll take a break. Uh, let's take this report. We'll be back. Lagos Ibado Expressway has been in the news for the wrong reasons in recent weeks. As the reality bites on commuters that a reconstruction work on the road will take its toll on the free flow of traffic. However, respite seems to have come the way of commuters, as the Minister of Works, Power and Housing, Vatsunde Rajifashala, said contractors working on the road are right on schedule. The minister said commuters' experience on the road has improved because most of the blockages on the road have been reopened. It's slow. It's a process. And um, in this business of governors, we know that we are in a results-driven business. Uh, efforts count for a lot, but results define it. This is a result. Your lives are very important to us. Uh, after solving the road problem as we intend to across the country, uh, we do not want to be beset with loss of very, very important human life and human capital. He also said the federal government is committed to the completion of federal roads in the country, adding that his ministry will continue to monitor the progress made so far. We are not back to full service yet, but clearly as we go on, we will see improvement. This is important because there will be other diversions further down the road. Okay, we need the cooperation of commuters to bear with us during this period. I promise you, as we receive your cooperation, uh, as we get more of your forbearance, that the sacrifice will ultimately be worth it. You will have a better journey experience uh, month after month and uh, year after year. Commuters on the road also shared their experiences on the road. They said the situation has improved since some of the blockages and diversions were cleared. They, however, appeal to the federal government to ensure the speedy completion of the road. Before a traffic is called much, most especially the rain for it's called more the traffic was nice. That other alternative road should be worked on, maybe tied a bit and the potholes filled. It will make life easier. Because once uh, this the Christmas period is over and the usual also a puzzle of Lagos is fine, I guess this traffic will still return. This road has been for many years, it has been awarded out. Though every uh, what you call, every government that come up, every government that come up, they are the one to start from where the two post start. Uh, but we we'll give God the glory. The minister also advised drivers to observe all road signs and avoid driving under the influence of alcohol. Back from that report, we still have Mr. Shola Omolayo with us here in the studios. He is a social commentator. Now, let's talk a bit, you know, about response time of the government to critical issues, you know, that affect lives. <clears throat> For instance, this issue of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, a lot of people have died on that road in recent times because of the ongoing uh, construction and non construction and whatever the issues are. You know, I personally lost uh, an in-law not too long ago, you know, just at that point where it now becomes uh, a one-way, where everybody mm -hmm. now has to. Mm -hmm. And that has been like that for a bit. Why do you think the government is always slow in responding uh, to issues that affect the lives of the citizenry? For some time now, you know too well that life never means anything to us, to our leaders, to everybody. In those good old days, when you see a cop somewhere, you'd run away from that, sure. that, that part, <laughs> excuse me, mm. for some time. A whole week, you get threatened that somebody died. If I, after they must have removed the cop, you still discover that people find it very 
difficult to pass through that place. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. But today, today, even when the cop is decomposing, you see people passing by. Don't say, say, if they can notice his pulse, they will remove his pulse and leave the. And you will call government agent, the the council guys who are in charge, the health sector who are in charge. They will come. So when it comes to life, I don't know how we're going to discuss it. Where we kill people and we care less about it and nobody says anything about it. We just now is a reading in Nigeria. There's an, uh, there was a road accident last night. Seven people died. Even the newscaster of such a, 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 a news never feels it. Check other nations. Check other media. When it involves life, you see the passion that is involved. But here, we care less. Like it's a normal thing. Like it's a normal thing. Life never matters anymore. So when you are talking about Lagos, about the express road, the kind of accident that goes there, it has become a normal thing. It's only when, it, when, when one important person loses, I mean, lost his life, that is when you see attention coming up. That, we, that is when they begin to show concern. Outside this country, you see noble men coming to. Leaders of nation will be telling you they lost four people and the whole nation will be mourning. But here, it's a different story. Okay. So when you talk of the Ibadan Express Road, the, 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 the workers there, the contractors there, See it as a normal thing because if they are not seeing it as a normal thing, they should, if they have blood in their veins, they should feel it that people are dying here. But the careless, okay. when you even talk about the sign, where are you going to see the sign? It's almost at the edge of where the bed yeah. is, mm. not even some like kilometers before, away. Before. Yeah, you understand true. it? Unlike before, where yeah, you have all signs on the on our express road, even on, on some patch road. You understand and it? even aside, mm -hmm. aside from that, you know, while, when you're cost, constructing a major highway like that, there are accessories, you know, you put yes. on the road. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Safety. That is why I say they just put it almost at the end. There's no one inside half a kilometer, a kilometer exactly. ahead of that. Between so, so, uh, exactly. so, so, let your speed between, uh, run between 60 and 70. At this point, nothing. Oh, no man is standing a guard to say, Stop, stop. Down, like I keep down. telling you, the only person that you will see is the DIO on our roads asking for your roadworthiness, which I am expecting lawyers to go and charge DIO to court for collecting roadworthiness when the road is not even worthy. All right, Mr. Molly, we'll come back okay. to you. Let us Let's bring, um, Let us bring um, Abuja into this conversation. Uh, we are being joined by Jaye Gaske, a national coordinator, protester to power movement P2PM, uh, joining us from our studios in um, Abuja. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. Gaske. We're looking at the Lagos Ibadan Expressway uh, reconstruction and all the matters arising from all of that. Uh, uh, our guest here in the studio uh, well, has actually indicted uh, the, uh, the construction uh, workers on their own part as uh, being negligent, as in most of the problems um, stem from them. Do you agree with that? Hello, Mr. Gaske, can you hear us? All right, we seem to be having some uh, we uh, uh, connectivity issue with our Abuja uh, studios. We'll try yeah. and reconnect in the course of the program. Uh, Mr. Mother, let me just bring another issue right now, which is that of funding. You remember the seemingly drama that played out between the executives and um, the Minister of Power and Housing, about the Fashion Line, and of mm -hmm. course the National Assembly, the assembly. over the cuts, you know, in, in um, budgetary budget allocation, you know. <laughs> Don't you think that uh, has, has actually gone a long way to actually store most of the work ongoing mm. in that? Yeah, you see, the executive were not too smart. Mm. They were not too smart to have arrested all of this situation with this national and um, this uh, legislature because they have they have the negotiative power. You can't run away from it. Forget every political language we are speaking. Uh, this person, Dogara is not right. Salaki is not good. That is politics. But in the recess, the parliament is the place of negotiation. 
You understand it? Yeah. And the executive fall prey into the hands of this guy. And they will always have their way because mm. on that on that cadre, in the constitutional vice of it, they have the power. They, they, they are on the majority. No matter what you do, they will play with your government and they will go. Some of them, even in the parliament, want you to fail. Because some will have somewhere. Some of them are governor when you are also a governor. Some of them also are in your post. They have their friends and they want to rubbish you. Hmm. You understand me? So that is where the executive really missed it big time from the onset. Hmm. You understand me? And if they can get their own money to buy their cars hmm. of how many billions and they cannot give you how much. The, fact, the, 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 the road construction stuff, they are fighting because of how much? Around, six, I mean, around 7 billion naira. Hmm. You understand me? And they can't get 7 billion to take care of our road. But they can get six point something billion to get the cars that mm. will come in to walk to, to fly that road. What kind of a thinking is that? Well, at the end of the day, you know, when we have all this kind of drama playing out, you mm -hmm. know, what is now the essence of having a budget when it doesn't expedite any form of action on approved projects? We are just playing a script here. Uh -huh. I was oh. told you that. And we've once been voted for that um, particular project over the years. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, the question is, at what time does any of this executive receive a full budget mm. at what time they've never been able to get the the required Tired. budget for the police are complaining just like other um, sectors sectors yeah. are complaining of funds you understand it so why because the law that ought to have released those funds has not been endorsed and what the question again is that do we have that money do we have such a money that is why i'm i'm now crying out that Paraventure, what we have is what we can make do with. Let us go to that road and look at it. Tell these contractors, the most dangerous area, put them aright. While your discussion, continue. Because no amount of grammar you're speaking, the people will fly that road almost at every second. Mm. And there will be, that is a road that has no security. We are not looking at I that. See. Just flying the road is not even the only thing here. Mm. We are security uh, uh, post mm. for health, no sign for emergency, emergency. no hangouts emergency for emergency. For emergency, for emergency. Mm -hmm. We are just having a straight drive road, and we are not seeing that now. We are not seeing that. There's no, I've I, I, I traveled that path sometimes, and I've not been able to notice a point where, paraventure, you have something you want to rest. You are talking of a road of almost 120 kilometer drive. And there's no single point where you can just recess yourself unless you move to the bush side. Mm. You understand me? So they not, they not, the whole, when you look at the construction itself, the, 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 the engineering, I mean, the drawing I, I, and the engineering work is let's, completely let's hold, let's hold that thought. I actually want us to actually talk a bit more about that. But first, let's go to Abuja. I think they might be ready for us now. Do we have Mr. Gaskia ready to uh, join the program now? Right, as much as we try to connect uh, with Abuja, we'll take a very quick break. We'll be right back. Um, stay with us. What's in the house? What's wrong now? with us? Uh, go for it. Let me Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Galaxy Today on a Tuesday morning. We're looking at the Lagos Ibadan Expressway reconstruction. We are taking the conversation to Abuja. We have been joined by Jaye Gaskia, the national coordinator, uh, protest to power movement, P2M movement. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, my other question was uh, uh, the, the reconstruction work going there. And our uh, guests in the studio seem to think that uh, the, a whole lot of it rests on the shoulders of um, the construction companies that they have seemingly or deliberately stored uh, uh, work ongoing there. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I didn't quite get the question. Sorry. Okay, the question is, uh, do you think that uh, most of the issues we have on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is as a result of the construction uh, workers or the construction companies rather not really doing what they should be doing at this particular time? 
well, uh, we may have challenges actually with the construction companies, with the different uh, construction companies. Uh, we may have challenges with the, with respect uh, to the fact of the of the uh, actual level of competence of these uh, construction companies. Uh, there may be problems with the fact that um, the awarding of the contracts were on the basis of um, uh, some form of favoritism and the rest of that. But the book actually stops with the government, the, with, with, with the authority that is awarding the contract. So it is the authority that is awarding the contract that is responsible for the incompetence of the construction companies uh, and the rest of that. Uh, be that as it may, there is also a bigger challenge actually with government, with the fact that because what, what this reflects is that as a government, the government is not planning, and I'm not just talking about this government, I'm talking about government, uh, you know, in, in, in continuity. You know that government is not planning because this, if this was part of a plan and it was planned for, uh, then the, the different processes and the different phases would have been anticipated and then resources would also have been, you know, uh, 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 proactively, you know, uh, 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 allocated towards it over a course of several years. So if you know you are a, a, the construction of a road is going to take you five years to uh, completely reconstruct the, uh, the expressway and you are dividing it into phases and the rest of that, then you need to also uh, uh, be proactive in terms of how you are going to get the resources you know, for this to happen over the course of those phases and over the course of those years. Now, we, we have not done our own planning right, which is also why I think we are cutting, we are cutting corners and, and, uh, in order to try to cut costs uh, so that uh, rather than give it to people who will be able to do it, and it may be a little bit expensive, you are giving it to people who will not be able to do it, just just because uh, uh, it is a bit less expensive in terms of the cost per unit, but I mean, we, we, uh, there are also uh, a, a lot of other things that are also uh, going on. One of the things that the Procurement Act requires is also that there should be a due diligence. You know, there should be a due diligence. There should be, you know, uh, an assessment of the competence of those who are bidding for any work. And in this case, for a construction work, there should be due diligence looking at their history, what they have done, where they have done it, and uh, you know, where they have worked in the past. I don't think we did a proper homework, uh, and we compounded the problem by also uh, our own uh, inability to, to have uh, a, a, a cohesive political leadership in terms of uh, how, how to get this done. So, for example, the challenges between the executive and the, and the legislature with respect to this. Because if you have a cohesive political leadership and cohesive political vision around a cohesive national plan, then you wouldn't be having this kind of challenges. That's part of the challenge that we have. It's, it's a problem that is down to the character of our elites. Political elites is also a problem that is down to the, the nature of uh, the way and manner in which that elite awards contract. Look at the power sector. It's the same, it's the same thing. Uh, and when you look at all the things that we, we have done in, in recent times, in the last 10 years, uh, we've almost done them in the near adversary manner. And, and that is why we are facing the challenges that we are facing with respect to infrastructure decay. Uh, because many of these roads have been repaired and repaired and reconstructed several times in the last 20 years in the, since the return to democracy. But, we, we, but the problem is that the decay continues to go on. And the decay continues to go on because there is, a, there is a incompetence, both on the part of the construction companies, or by, on the part of the companies and the corporations, and on the part of the you know, administrators, the public administrators, and the political leadership. Let us um, look at um, some human angle um, you know, implications um, to this um, particular um, situation right now uh, because um, a whole lot of lives have been lost and um, a lot of people have been injured uh, without, without uh, them being able to come back to their normal selves. You know? And uh, it's as a result of um, some of um, our inactions of the federal government as regards um, uh, response and management and, of course, security. Well, we've talked so much about it here in Lagos. Uh, but the only thing that the federal government at this particular time is actually looking into those issues of um, security and rescue management on that Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Hello, Mr. Gaske, can you hear us? Can you? Can, yeah. It's that we do things in a manner that we, in a manner that we, uh, we are not, we, do, we don't seem to be actually conscious, consciously doing them and consciously planning for them. We they have all of these loose ends. So, for example, you leave the Lagos Express in that state for, for several years uh, and then you 
begin to have the challenges that you have, this human hunger challenges that you are, you are talking about in terms of uh, 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 the burden for on transportation, the burden that, that it imposes on people uh, in, in terms of uh, accidents uh, that uh, would not have happened if the road had been, you know, uh, in, in, in a good state. In terms of insecurity, in terms of the fact that. Uh, The operation of uh, criminals and criminal activities. So, uh, the, and, and these are all fallouts of that of, of that process. Uh, now, what we need to do, uh, and, and this is also because we we also live in a climate where uh, our citizens are not empowered enough to actually hold, you know, their their governments accountable. Because this is a dereliction of uh, the duty to protect, the duty the duty of care of the government for for citizens, uh, the provision of the wealth of the well-being and the security, you know, of citizens. Which is uh, the section uh, 14 of the Constitution of Nigeria, which is one of which says that the purpose of government shall be, you know, to ensure the welfare and the uh, security of citizens. And uh, uh, the Lagos Ibadan, the situation on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, the clear demonstration of the fact that uh, neither the welfare, the well-being, nor the security of citizens that have, uh, you know, uh, that have to use that road or that live along that road is being, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, taken care of or guaranteed. And that's a failure of governance and, and I think that uh, uh, this is one of the things that I think that the uh, Consumer Protection Council should be taken up. Uh, we should have cases where actually people are held liable both the construction companies and the, go and the government are held liable and they pay compensation. If there is an accident that occurred because uh, the uh, construction of the road has been stalled for a very long time, people should be compensated and we should hold government accountable. People, government should be responsible for taking care of uh, the medical bills and, and so on and so forth of, of, of people. We have. Is it a case of the government really not planning? You see, uh, or they are biting more than they can chew? You see, it, it, they can't bite more than they can chew because it's a father that gives us to three children. So you must think of how to take care of them. Mm -hmm. That is not the children's business here. Mm -hmm. You understand? So look at what he's saying. We, 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 we are, we are, the, the whole discussion is an interwoven thing. The government, the contractor, mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. I tell you, if you want to deal with people in this country, if you want to start dealing with people, Start with the contractor. Maybe we cannot see government, Abi. We cannot arrest them. Let us begin to sue these guys to court for A, B, C, D. Then they will, the government will either be a joiner or, or yeah. begin mm. to put things right, mm. knowing too well that people are going to take this thing up someday. That is why I'm again, I am now saying, let us begin to discuss those who are working on those roads. Now I said, he was talking about security or whatever. That's the same thing. Yeah. From Lagos to Ibadan, drive to that path. There's nowhere you can stop. There's nowhere you can just feel that, okay, we're on a journey of almost um, 30 minutes, one hour. You have a baby in the car or you want to pee and you want to pass. You have a parking point the where you can lot. stand. I'm so missing. sure that even at that parking point, there's a security guard. Okay, because it is an isolated environment where you can say, okay, oh, let's get to this point. When we get there, we can ease ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Health, I mean, an emergency health care has not been noticed on that part. And here, we are constructing a road. And once that road is done, what is different from the past government and this one? Mm -hmm. The other government told us that it's going to take four years for them to, <laughs> to complete the road. And this one is saying they're going to... The road is going to be completed very soon. Mm. And where is the fund coming from? Is the ministry assuring us that they have the fund to pay these well, contractors? Harry, well, how is Lagos State getting it right mm. when, you know, the apex body, which is... Well, the man, buy your, why say one, buy your, mm. she... What does that mean? Uh -huh. They can help you get a <laughs> job. They will, they will not help you do the job. Mm. Mm. You know, when, when Tinumbu, uh, 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 the former governor of, uh, uh, old former governor of Lagos State, in person of... <laughs> Uh, Ahmed Ashiwaju Tinumbu confessed to the fact that when they, when, when they were looking for somebody 
to take over from Fashana and Alpha Day was a choice that they were even scared that can he do it? But they were shocked. They were so shocked that he has even surpassed what they, they, they can ever they imagine. imagine so that is why I said, look, forget government might be doing what is wrong in their own way. But giving you a job is a privilege. There are, not, there are a lot of people that are looking for such a job. Okay? This is what I'm saying, that contractors now should be held responsible. So that if you hold them responsible, they will talk. They will tell you, okay, we don't have money. That's why we are like this. And you will tell them, come to think of it. Go to that road. I am not, I am not advertising any company. I'm not supporting any of them. Thank God I don't, have, I don't know any of them in, in person. I don't know, even know where the office, where they, where they have the offices. So you can tell from the drive of what you're seeing that you can be so confident that you would, when you get to a point it's where these point companies the are working, are work, are working with, once you're out of that point and you move to the next point where the other companies are, you, you will see. find a smooth, comfortable drive within those period of time. Yeah. But once you're again coming back, you find that comfort, and when you're on this other side, oh my God, you'll be so sure that these are the men of old who understand the terrain of government. But where because do, where these do are we the start? people. So the where truth, do we start in terms of holding the, the construction government and the companies construction and the government accounts. accountable? The, Mr. The, the, Gaskia mentioned that mm -hmm. the citizens are not even empowered you know, enough to hold the government. We can't, we can't. Uh, that is why I say yeah. the government is a spirit. You can't find it. You understand? <laughs> but the, but the government is made up of people. Do you? And they, they, yeah, they are people, but they are spirit. Everybody goes and come out. A passenger is out of that place. He's even looking for government. They can't even find government. You understand <laughs> it? So government is a spirit. We, you, you play your part, you will leave. But we can, we know these contractors. We will hold them responsible so that they will tell us. How did they get that job? Which person? How? Were you paid? Were you not paid? How did you do it? Then you must uh, see in Lagos State, they have, I, 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 I overheard that the Lagos State government is so smart that they have a deal with all these contractors that this road must be, must be in good shape between a period of years mm -hmm. where you yourself must know that you must make a, you must give a standard job or else, teach about that. You have to go back. One to well. You understand it? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to federal government, that man, that federal government is a spirit. So invariably, should we... They are really looking for him. So, so, so invariably, we've seemingly put so much, so much powers on the federal government. It's not we. Like, it's the constitution. The constitution, it's which, the constitution. Which, it's which the constitution is a decree. <laughs> the decree <laughs> that was, 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 was so put in place <laughs> by Agui so Rossi by begin, bringing a unity system of government to, to one point. That is why we can so rely on this. That is why we are relying only on a pardon, express road, <laughs> whereas Otter Road has become a bush, Otter, Otter Road. That place is Conta or that. It's what they use, bitumen. It's what they use on that road. But go to Otter Road. The people in Ayetoro, they are not in Nigeria now. They are not in Nigeria. Right. Ayetoro to Otter. Otter. They are not in Nigeria. They are on their own. They are on their own. Because even before the state government can do anything, it's going to be another two years. Another extra two years. Why? Why, so? Why would they take so long to do that stuff? Go to that road. You will, if, they, if, they are, if they told you that that place was a smooth road in the past, you will smile and say it's not possible. Grass. So it still boils down to lack of maintenance culture by part, who? Of, um, part of government, as it is. By, by, by the contractors who, who, do you know the road we used to have in, uh, before Lagos State showed up? After the first time when Julius Vaga, Julius Vaga and Sonel Bonnet were in Nigeria, they are so afraid of the military. No, the Avola was who never take nonsense. The road that was constructed in those days were three inches thick. Three inches, four inches thick. But after then, after then, we start finding road of come to Barua. All of the maintenance on the road they have been doing Barua and Ipaja inside is just one inch. At times it's not up to one inch. I take my time, I come down, I will check. I have a tape in my car, I will put it. At times it's not up to one inch because if you want to talk, you know what you're saying. You understand it? Whereas the, the bitumen should be three inches thick. Thank God. I'm not celebrating number day, but thank God. Thank God, thank God we have him. And I'm, I'm also praying that he will remember my road. I stay somewhere. That road is not too good, but I know by the grace of God, you are hearing me or your people. Find my name, come and do my road. So that if that is the way we are going to be, 
You know if you need God, you need to pray in the night. Right, pray in the night. All the time. Let us profess solutions. Pardon, express road. Julius Baja is the chief contractor of road construction in Nigeria. He is the one that constructs uh, 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 the, the top mainland bridge. Why is he finding it very difficult? How many months in the days of Obasanjo does it took, uh, cost them, take them to construct that road? Why is he taking them four years now to your long when the road was just an empty fallow land? They constructed it within a short period. These contractors are the devilish politicians putting Nigeria into mess. Let us come back home. There are contractors in, I told us, let us call Ambode. If he has a company that is running this thing, we should not play side. I don't know. Yeah. If they are his friend, let yeah. them take charge. So this old contractor is right, right, enough. Right, 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 enough is enough. Yeah. They should Lord, go to that road. No, we are, your down, children Lord, cannot pee. Calm down. You cannot pee. Mm. You, there is no security, no hangar where you can stand. They are just doing a road. And you are traveling. If you stop, you are on your own. All that right. road is just a track where you run like a, a, a if you are not in stem boat, where you can run and not stop. If you do not know, you are on your own. All right, thank you, Molay. Oh I'm God. afraid we have to rest it at this point uh, because we are actually out of time. And Fashion, I don't have enough money. They have used that man. They have used him. <laughs> that, in that three offices, that, they that, are not that, giving him money. The budget the is discussion. far enough. The legislature are not releasing. They are not allowed them to have fun. Right, in thank, fact, the petrol we don't know is out of time. It's enough. We're out of time. Long, but, wow. I'm afraid that as much as we can say. So it is well. Today. It is well. Uh, it's been a very lengthy one. Mm. And when, very when, I, when I introduced one. him as a boisterous mm. commentator. Yeah, you weren't wrong there. All right. Well, that's uh, that's our show for today. And the East, too. The East Road. <laughs> which we'll, we'll people are Christmas is coming. All right. Thank you. We wish happy Christmas. It's coming. They should go to the East. urging the federal government to expedite action on the reconstruction of the Lagos Ibadan Express Road because whether we like it or not, we need to put premium on lives. People are dying daily mm. on that road. Mm. Please, the federal government has to do something fast. Yeah, Let's talking do about right doing something thing. there, we yeah. need to install lots of securities. I will need to talk about um, rescue management and of course our lives will be the better for it. Oh, my name is Justin Akadonia. Many thanks for being a part of the show and our thank you goes to uh, Jaye Gaskia who joined us from Abuja. And also Mr. Molayo. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for always bringing life to the program. You, all, all right, tomorrow at 10. Uh, it'll be time for another Indomie Instant Noodles raffle draw. Don't miss it tomorrow in case you